Hello and welcome to another edition of IMO Bastani with me, Aaron Bastani, at Aaron Bastani on Twitter, bringing you political truth bombs one fitted blazer at a time. Feel free to comment on, like, and share this video under the hashtag, hashtag IMO Bastani. Thanks for watching. Last week didn't just see the election of Jeremy Corbyn as leader of the Labour Party, but also the election of Tom Watson as deputy leader and of Sadiq Khan, uh, who was chosen as the party's candidate for the London mayor race next year. I'm speaking on Saturday and Today, you may or may not have seen, I certainly read it in the FT weekend, an interview between Sadiq Khan and the FT where he touched upon a number of issues and was very eager, in fact over eager I think, to criticise, lambast, slag off Jeremy Corbyn, which is quite frankly astonishing because without the Jacobins, he really stood little chance of winning that selection at all. It would have been the Blairite, Tessa Jowell, who once said she would throw herself under a bus for Tony Blair. Well, Tessa, there's still time. Khan told the FT Weekend in that interview, and here I quote, how he wants to keep Britain's competitive tax policy to attract more companies to London. I'm against any increase in the corporation tax, he said. Now, bear in mind, the UK already has a phenomenally low rate of corporation tax. That's taxes on corporate profits currently stands around 20%. By comparison, it's 25% in China. It's higher in China. It's 23.5% in Denmark, 33% in France, 30% in Germany, 30% in India, 38% in Japan, and around 40% in the US. With the US and Germany, it's kind of federalized, so it's a, it's a bit all over the place. But broadly speaking, all of these countries see higher rates of corporation tax than the UK. He's not interested in increasing corporation taxes to pay for free education or even just cut fees. He doesn't want to see corporation tax increase to help reduce social inequality, or pay for more housing, or pay for the NHS or elderly care, none of these things. Yeah. Even if you don't believe in public services, I think it's pretty clear that corporation tax will have to be increased at some point to help pay down Britain's deficit, which remains well over £90 billion a year. Khan told the FT in that interview that he felt a real perception had grown around the Labour Party in the last five years, particularly under the Ed Miliband leadership, of which he was a major part, that the party had become anti-business and that he was keen to change that impression, that he wanted to mount a repeat of the famed prawn cocktail offensive launched by Tony Blair in 1997. Quote, my job is to persuade your readers that they can trust me. If business does well, London does well. And if London does well, I'm happy. If business does well, London does well. If business does well, London... What does that even mean? What does that mean? If business does well, London does well. Lon the London of who? What Londoners? Where? If only it was that easy, Sadiq. I mean, what even do you mean by business? Because there are obviously conflicting interests within businesses. If you're a speculative landlord or a uh, construction company engaged in land banking, you have no problems with rampant property prices and rental prices. You love it. If you're a business that's renting somewhere, in order to do business, then you obviously do have a problem with that. And in fact, just as with average Londoners, the biggest problem for small and medium-sized enterprises in London today is rent. It's a huge problem. It's not a problem for the banks. It's not a problem for the construction companies. It's not a problem for the rentier class. It's a big problem for small and medium-sized enterprises, small and medium-sized businesses. So even within business, it's not quite clear what's best. Now, I don't really care about London businesses. I care more about London workers. I want them to have higher wages and pay lower rents. But the point is this, there is actually a fundamental tension within businesses and the business interest in London that Sadiq Khan doesn't seem to recognize. Why? I don't know. Maybe he's just not the sharpest tool in the box. I'm really comfortable with successful business people. That sounds just like Peter Mandelson. Only somebody who's never been involved in business talks like that. I know the challenges they face. You obviously don't because you're not talking about high rents for businesses. You're talking about not increasing corporation tax. That's only really an issue for multinational, Sadiq. I would be an advocate for London, and that includes the city and the business world. Again, he's conflating the city, which actually most of these companies aren't based in the UK or they don't really employ people in the UK. They're these big multinationals which come here for tax purposes and legal jurisdiction issues. They sometimes employ nobody in the UK, right? Maybe two people at one desk in Leicester. Now, while Khan didn't directly criticize Corbyn, he did say there was a fundamental tension on several issues, particularly business, between him and the new Labour leadership. Here again, I quote, for me, what is important is suck it, suck it, and see if it works. I guess he means trial and error, do what works. Well, I'm gonna tell you something for nothing, Sadiq. Everybody knows in London, for business and for people, for 99% of Londoners, the housing situation, the rental situation, is not working, it's broken. And the only reason why you came from behind to beat Tessa Jow was because people believed, maybe ridiculously, maybe idiotically, that you could provide some kind of solution. 
The truth is this, Khan is where he is because of the Jacobins. These people who joined the Labour Party either as affiliate members or proper members or registered supporters who came in more or less just to get Jeremy Corbyn elected as Labour leader also found themselves the opportunity to vote for Tom Watson as it conspired and Sadiq Khan as the candidate for London Mayor. For what it's worth, I think he could beat the likely Tory candidate for next year, Zach Goldsmith. People are comparing Goldsmith to Boris Johnson, saying he's another posh populist, only better looking and younger. I don't think that's correct. Johnson was breaking the mould. He was a one in a million politician. He was unique, whose literary references were as esoteric as his touch was popular. I don't think Zach Goldsmith can repeat that trick. He's worth between 200 to 300 million pounds. We don't get that kind of money in British politics. And if Khan went on living wages, living rents and rent caps, he'd nail this guy. Why his first big interview was with the Financial Times and a week after winning is beyond me. I think he's going through the motions, but you know what? Politically, right now, as we've seen with the SNP, the Lib Dems, and now Corbyn, we're not going through the motions. So what do you think? You know what I think? I think Steve Khan's playing a really dangerous game going to the right when the activist base, which got him where he is, is coming from the left. Why don't you put those thoughts down on the hashtag, hashtag I'm Obastani, or reach out to me, at Aaron Bastani, or Navara Media, at Navara Media. The weather tonight is fabulous, and you know what? It really reminds me that we've got some really wonderful things in London. Edgy urban views bleak fire escapes and look London brick but we can do so much more like cheap affordable rents and better wages for everybody bye